I stuck the shit out of you before our date. What? I stalked the shit out of you. Oh, I'm sure. Before our date. I that think you have like an rape. infectious look. I think I have an infectious personality, which helps the looks. Before I had seen you or anything, I was actually texting my group chat of friends and I was about to stand you up. I was going to stand you up on our first date. And then we had our first kiss, which was terrible. R-O-T-N, let, let me, me present, present to you. you the Rotten Podcast. The Rotten Podcast. How do you want me to say it? Rotten. Welcome to episode three. We're back. Are we doing a shot? We are doing a shot. It's a good, nice Friday evening for us right now. But something super exciting is happening when you guys watch this episode tomorrow. It tomorrow is-, is the official mint of our NFT project, which, I mean, we've talked about it a little bit on yeah. this podcast already. We've literally been working on this for eight months. So mm-hmm. everything we've put our work into is all coming into fruition tomorrow from when this drops <laughs> cheers um, what are we cheersing to we're cheersing to the launch of our nft project runaways of the never world dropping tomorrow huge day big things coming let's go rotten all right let's go cheers not bad oh that's i did not like that one i don't know why you like that tequila like it is like burning my throat right now i mean i just love tequila i can drink I like tequila, tequila too, but I just, maybe it's because I really haven't had a proper lunch today. I've just had You candy. do not eat normally. No. Tiffany, you are a child. Well, whenever I get really stressed out or I'm in like work mode, I just forget to do the basic necessities. I forget how to sleep. I forget how to eat. I forget how to shit. Literally nothing <laughs> happens. I just work, 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 work. I know. I feel like I enable your behavior by just giving you candy just (laughs) going to the store and dropping off little gummies well let's get into it like what how is your week been well this week we we finally launched the podcast the first episode went up i'm not kidding when i say i've never gotten so many text messages so many dms from people saying we love the podcast i learned so much about you i know you in real life like how the hell did i not know about your past so it's honestly been really nerve-wracking for me because i when I was talking about the things I was talking about in that very first episode, I didn't think of the fact that like people in real life who actually knew me, who didn't know that part of myself was going to reach out to me being like, wow. So it made me mm-hmm. feel like I shouldn't have talked about those things in a no, way. No, you totally should have. That That is the reason why, you know, I was super excited to start this podcast is like to like share those things that I feel like the world doesn't know about you, which is so impressive. Yeah. So yeah, so launching nice. launching the podcast, really big week. I mean, I've been so busy that I was nervous leading up. And then once yeah. we dropped it, I'm like, I am so busy that I don't even have time to have feelings <laughs> about this. Like, just put it out, go on, keep moving. But honestly, there was a lot of really good feedback. A lot of people reached out to me and was like, you know, congratulations. Like, that's so exciting. You're doing a podcast. Like, you're so well-spoken, not to toot my own horn, but like, you have a radio voice. You have a good voice, whatever. Um, uh, yeah. Actually, the yeah. Spotify girl who uh, is our contact, she was like, Matt has such a great radio voice. I was like, <laughs> I don't want to give Matt a bigger ego, but he really does. Wow, you have such a problem complimenting me. I don't get it. I don't. I just kid around. It's called sarcasm. You're really <laughs> bad at sarcasm I and am. kidding around. Oh, you're so sweet to me. <laughs> this is how we're starting the third <laughs> episode. Good to know. But with that being said, I honestly feel that shot. I'm feeling that shot. You are a lightweight. Not only that, I only took half a shot. Like I faked the other half with the water. Let me be honest with you guys, because I don't take full shots or I you really, don't. Yeah. I'm literally a one shot wonder. You are the definition. When you said you were when, before we started <laughs> dating, which we're going to get into yes. how we met and stuff, but you're like, yeah, I'm like a one shot, like wonder. And people say that, but you oh, I'm are a date. legitimately a one shot, <laughs> one drink wonder. And really you're like two thirds drink wonder Uh you'll never finish a drink you give me like a third (laughs) or it's like halfway filled and kind of watery because you've been saying and i just sit there and i see you and you're like laughing and like you're a little red and i'm like off of two thirds of a drink like (laughs) crazy i actually have a great story on the day i realized i was a one-shot wonder um so little backstory i'm from sacramento the closest college in sacramento that is like a university is uc davis uc davis is famous for picnic days have you ever heard of picnic day 
No. Maybe it's a thing Californians know about because it is like the massive biggest party that happens in NorCal every single year. UC Davis opens up their campus and there is it's like a wet campus that day. Everyone is drinking. Everyone's having fun. There's floats. There's fashion shows. There's things going on. And my friends invited me to go to the UC Davis picnic day. And before we go there, we of course meet up at like a local like house in UC Davis and take a shot. And I take um, a shot of Hennessy because Asians love their Hennessy, by the way. No. Well, I was just thinking about like how and how they always Our Asian drink friends love like Hennessy. Hennessy. Okay, so I took a shot of Hennessy and we go eat sushi right away. We go to a spot called McCoonies. It's famous in UC Davis. My sister Tammy actually waitressed there for like five to seven years. And it's like one of the few chain restaurants that's like really big in Sacramento. And I'm eating my sushi. I feel completely fine. I go to the bathroom. I need a pee, right? Because I took my one shot. I'm feeling a little buzz. I go to the bathroom. I go pee. And all of a sudden, I wake up to a waiter opening my bathroom door because I faint and pass out. I literally pass out on one shot of Hennessy. I wake up and I start profusely throwing up in the toilet after that. Thankfully, I made it in the toilet. I've never ever puked not in a toilet or a sink before. Big claps to me. But <laughs> you look so concerned right now, Matt. Matt's I'm trying face to is think so concerned. Because I'm trying to think, like, have I ever heard this story before? No. So what the hell? How am I hearing new stories for the first time as everyone else? Classic Tiffany telling the world while she tells me shit. There are so many stories I probably don't know about you. I don't know. I talk a lot. I probably <laughs> said everything I could. You, um, you share the world new. I'll, f I'll be watching your stories yeah. to get updates about your life. No way. Yeah, it's bullshit. I'm, I'm like, sorry. You don't tell me first. Like, you have to tell your, like, following I'm so sorry that happens. I'm You're really bad sorry. at updating. No, I do. I genuinely feel bad I don't update you in real life, but I just assume that people just know what's happening in my life. But I guess oh, I yeah, to tell Oh, yeah, I can just, you know, look into a crystal ball and see, like, where you're at and what you're doing. I know I'm really 100%. bad at that. My own family tells me that. My Tammy just today was texting me about Theo being like, oh, you got a new dog? And we've had this dog for, like, three weeks now. You are a terrible <laughs> communicator and texter. I am, but besides the point, because I was profusely throwing up head in the toilet three times at a UC Davis local restaurant, McCoonies, um, I finally get out and all of my friends were like, where were you? And I was like, you guys didn't check up on me. And they're like, no, we thought you were shitting. Um, so I ended up not making it to picnic day. I slept the rest of the day and I was sad because that was the first and only time I was ever invited to picnic day. Couldn't make it. By the way, I've never heard you say shitting or shit so many times. Really? <laughs> you never say that. Uh, or actually, because you do. I don't shit that often. <laughs> actually, you do. Be like, I got to shit. And I'm like, okay, that's gross. Hey, at least I don't fart 24-7 like someone I know. Yeah, I'm like, you know, it's <laughs> it, it, it all just like kind of comes out. You know, there's no shame in that. Matt is so funny because he'll fart and just, and just, and just. My farts are like horn, like t trumpet. Tubes. Yes, yes. But not only that, you'll do it as if you didn't do it. And I'll look at you being like, did you fart? And I'm like, yeah. It's not like you're like, fart. Excuse me. You're like, fart. And I'll look at you and be like, sorry. Yeah, I try to hide it sometimes because sometimes <laughs> you're just not even paying attention. You're so in your own world that you literally don't catch most of them. So I'll be like, huh? Wait, really? Anyways, yeah, yeah. What's the percentage? How many do you think I actually catch? <laughs> I have no idea. I want to get back to this week, though, okay? because it has been such a busy week. And uh, I want to hear like what you've been working on and how it's been going, because not only did we launch the podcast, you launched the documentary I did. about the making of Rotten. I did. And by the way, the reason I want to talk about this week is because like personally for me, I feel like I've never worked more. Mm -hmm. Like this is the craziest time I feel like in my life as far as work goes with launching this project working on all these things like it's been insane and it is like so inspiring to be working with you in this way because like launching this podcast I had so many questions like okay like we need to work on the YouTube thumbnail like all this stuff and you didn't really say anything but then all of a sudden you're like I'm gonna work on the podcast and what was it like three or four days you legitimately did not sleep there was one morning I woke up I think at eight o'clock mm -hmm. and you were coming into bed and you're like I haven't slept yet. I'm like, <laughs> what? And then I woke up at like 1030. And then you woke up two hours later and then you went back to work and you sat there 
And I have never met a human being that can get her work done and sit and concentrate for as many hours as you do. It's like insane. It is so inspiring. Like 100%. Like this week I was just like in awe being like, damn, I need to step my shit up because I'm like (laughs) such a pussy sometimes where I'm like, oh, I'm tired, whatever. And I'm like (laughs) literally like in the studio and I'm like, well, Tiffany would be like, you know, she would just be like persistent right now. So I'm going to like put the gear on, you know? Well, okay. So yes, you've never experienced that for me because I am my own boss. So I never give myself like really hard deadlines, but I felt like I had to like work that hard because we had a hard deadline. (laughs) We were launching November 4th. 15th no matter what and so for me when I get those deadlines put on me I will work so damn hard yeah and that's like what I realized is like I've never seen like too much work you know in my head I'm like okay you have you know we have the podcast coming out we're doing all this stuff with our nft project Mm -hmm. you have you know the documentary about the project that we're launching rotten and then you have like brand deals all the while, like these are like five simultaneously also, things. while the house that I'm flipping in Los Angeles is getting staged and being put up on MLS. And we actually have an open house in like three days. So exciting. I know. I know. You haven't seen the house yet. I haven't seen the stage. I mean, I've been. You haven't yeah. seen the staged house yet. Well, you haven't invited me. I will. I've only I'm, I've been so busy that I only randomly saw it yesterday. Actually, I've only saw it, seen it twice since it got staged over like a week and a half ago. But that's because I've been so damn busy, like literally eat, breathe, sleep, rotten. Actually, not even eat or sleep or breathe. It's just rotten. It's you been are rotten. like a cicada to me. You know what? You call me bugs a lot. I hear cockroach. I hear cicada. Well, I, you, I, I met cockroach actually because Alex, my my last boss, who shout out to Alex, she's amazing. She said, I remember when we were talking about at the start of like the pandemic and everything. She's like, I'm not worried about COVID. I'm a cockroach. I'm never gonna die. I just keep going. And ever since that, I've like I've kind of thought about you in the same way. I'm like, you just like you don't need water. You don't need anything. You're just like. I don't know. You run on your just own. Just cut off my head and I'll still survive. <laughs> you kind of just run on your own bullshit. I don't know what it is. Oh my God. You know what? You know what the similarities me and Alex have? We're both born on March 31st. That's f- crazy. So it must be like the Aries in us or the March 31st girlies out there. Maybe two boss ass women working yeah. it. I did want to give you a huge shout out for Thank your you. incredibly insane work ethic. Like, it's not that you work all the time that hard, but no. it's like not only do you you like you're able to manage that many projects at once. It's like you don't even stay. You're not even stressed. You're just focused and you sit there and you do it. And then even when it's like, oh, we'll go grab food or do something. It's not you're. it's not like you're sitting there complaining or stressed out. You're kind of like you you do need time to like, you know, recharge. But for the most part, you kind of like are able to bounce around and be very present in what you're doing, which is so impressive. But I do want to say. Being like a rapper and rapping and being in that state, which is mm-hmm. all like braggadocious, a lot of it. And it's like, you know, being cocky and yeah, a big thing a lot of rappers rap about is like, you know, I'm working hard, I'm grinding. And I know a lot of people that say that shit and like people in general that love to flex like how hard they're working. Yeah. But let me tell you something. What? All you rappers, all you guys <gasps> are not working as hard as my fiance, Tiffany. And are that's on God. I swear to God. It's like if people knew... <laughs> and you don't you don't like promote it. You don't think it's cool, you know, but like it's so impressive that I feel like if people knew how hard you really were working, they'd be like, damn, I'm a bitch. <laughs> so shout um, out to Tiffany being harder than most rappers. You. I'll be oh, that's <gasps> a big spider. Oh, my God. I think I'm like, please get that spider. No, don't kill it on the carpet. Hey, fuck it. That is the biggest spider I've ever seen in our house. That's not true. Okay, not the biggest, the just, thickest. It was just dark. Oh my god! Uh, did you actually get it? I don't know. Probably not. I don't know. I think I'm like I not. I think I don't care about bugs or something anymore. Remember the other day when we were coming in the house and you screamed your fucking head off, and I'm like, now I'm desensitized because there's times where you'll <laughs> yell your head off, and I'm like, holy shit, someone's breaking into the house with a gun, and it's just like there's a bug, and I'm like, are you f-? like you cannot do that? There needs to be like a scale here with like the level of intensity because would that not be the same reaction as if something catastrophic was happening no because i'd be screaming bloody mary no you were screaming bloody mary about a spider no i go (gasps) no that is not what you do don't lie (laughs) on the rotten podcast you go "Ah!" like (laughs) oh like 
so loud. No, I do a big giant gasp. Remember? Because it freaks Andrew out as well. You scream your head off. We're going to... I we'll do a big gasp and then I scream. I guess you'll know if it's an intruder because then I'll just scream and no big gasp. I don't hear the gasp. I just hear the scream. You Anyways. You me now. It was just a gasp. Anyways... <laughs> I will say I, I'm shocked to hear this compliment. I feel great. Please I've been waiting to give you more. this. No, no, no. I've been waiting to give you this compliment for this podcast. Sorry, you waited three days to give me a compliment. That's so mean. I thought it would make for like good what? content. That's well, I so thought about it the other day and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to give her like good flowers. It was so nice. By the way, I'm done buying you flowers. Why? I bought you flowers because of how hard you've been working as a gesture. And you literally took them. You brought them in here. You haven't let them but like you didn't even notice that i moved them out of I here did. of course i did i literally was like i purposely stuck them in here because we were actually supposed to film this i have a serious question do you actually like flowers yes i think they're beautiful do i like the idea of having to like keep them alive because i know i don't know how to keep them alive no like some people will like you know they're like oh you like you got me flowers like da 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 you're just like oh you got me flowers and like you just put them in this room to die. Like I didn't I even did get not. to see. I, th- I Today was the first day I saw the That's flowers that I got fault. you like five days ago. That's not my fault. I wanted to show it to you. And today is Friday by the sat Friday. Today yeah. is Friday. On Wednesday, we're supposed to film an episode and you gave me those flowers on Monday. So I stuck them in here because they were supposed to be sitting here looking all cute and pretty. And I was going to say, Matt got me these flowers, but then you <laughs> freaking took them out. Well, because when I was wor- uh, when I was like resetting things yeah, up, it was it like bad. Well, no, it actually looked good, but like it was in our way of like looking and talking at each other. Um, I would have loved to look at flowers instead of you that you got me. Another reason why I'm done buying you flowers. I just said I would rather look at the flowers than you, which means I like the flowers more. Exactly. I like flowers. You know what? Don't even talk shit because I, I remember we were having like little arguments here and there, maybe like a year ago. And I was actually talking to Mia and Mia gave me some really good advice. She was like, well, have you done anything to like make Matt feel appreciated? Like, you know how like boys normally get flowers for girls? Maybe you should like get him flowers. I walked my booty over to Trader Joe's. I got Matt a bouquet of flowers, gave this man a bouquet of flowers for him to only never stick it in a vase of water. Never. And no, you I got, did. No, I did put no, it. No, didn't. no, this is what I did. I put it in the water, but I never took like the wrapping off of it. I don't know if that's better or worse or the same, but like... It's better because they're staying alive. I'm sorry. At least I stuck it somewhere cute. My my bouquet of flowers that you got me, you literally just left it in the plastic. You just stuck. Okay, all done. And I said like four times, I tried to give you like sly messages. I was like, you don't like the flowers. Like, do you want me to unwrap it? And you're like, I'll do it. I think I genuinely just didn't know what to do because you were the first person to ever get me flowers. One, that's so sad. Um, Girls out there, please get your males flowers. And two, if males, males, if you get flowers, fucking take it out of the plastic wrap. Yeah. You would be so mad at me if I never took it out of the plastic wrap. You know how to take it out of the plastic wrap. First off, you worked at a florist's shop. What do you mean? I know how to keep them alive. That's, That's... That's true. You not to keep flowers alive. You just don't know how to take it out of no, its I wrapping. I do, of course. I know. I'm just kidding. But thank you. The flowers were very, very, very nice. And it actually scared me because I... Yeah. Can I can I say yes. something really quick? So <laughs> as I mentioned, Tiffany's been working super fucking hard. And mm-hmm. I'm like, you know what? I want to do something sweet for you. And I'm so like, sweet. let me let me get you flowers. Like kind of just bare minimum, nice boyfriend thing to do. Like nothing crazy, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, damn, I haven't gotten her flowers in a while. It's overdue. Got you flowers. You texted me. And and by the way, I was like, I went to the gym and then had to run errands or whatever. What was this, Monday? Yeah. You texted me and you said, what did you say? You said. Are you expecting something? I get a call from this guy, like a, a, a random number twice. And I was confused because he called me and I picked up and I go, hey. He's like, yeah, I have like a flower delivery for Tiffany. I go, oh, leave it at the front door. Okay, no one's home. Then you text me and you say, are you expecting something? So in my head, I'm like, are you home? You start asking me all these I asked questions. you one question. No, no, I no. said, what is it? One question. And why? Why couldn't you just open the damn door when a, when a guy is there ringing the doorbell and knocking? You can't just open the door to receive flowers, which is crazy, by the way. Because I didn't that, know there were flowers. I know, but like... <laughs> Come on, you're going to text me what's... I said, yeah, I'm expecting a package. You go, what's inside of it? I'm like, what the f*** 
can't you just bring it inside for me? I'm going to let you finish. Okay. And also on top of this, you have given me endless shit throughout our relationship about how bad I am with surprises. You're like, just go with it. Like, stop asking so many questions. You are also (laughs) terrible with surprises and I don't want to hear a word about it. Let's, let's back up a little bit. One, I do love surprises and I love being surprised. I just didn't know I was getting surprised. Well, no shit. I know, I know, but that's not my fault. I think there is a benefit to being a male versus a female, and this is a perfect example. So I see this car pull up on the side of our house. He pulls up. I don't know who he is. I didn't see anything in his hand. I just knew there was a car that had pulled up. It's dark outside, but it's bright inside the house. So he clearly knew I was home, right? I'm working actually in our podcast room, filming a couple of things, and I hear a ring. I'm literally in the middle of work, and I hear the ring bell. The dogs are acting up, and I'm like, okay, whatever. Like, this guy will leave. Like, it's probably an Amazon driver, whatever. Like, this happens all the time. They they knock, and then they leave. Then I hear another ring, and then I start freaking out a little bit because I'm like, I'm not expecting anything. I don't like people just hanging out in our front door. I don't want to talk to a, a solar panel worker, right? So I don't know what this guy is here for, and he keeps ringing. And then I start freaking out because, one, I'm a girl. I'm by myself. It's dark outside what is this man at like 6 p.m doing outside my house i don't know who he is so then i text you going are you expecting something you go yeah open the door and he hadn't left at this point and i go what is it because i don't want to open a door for like an amazon driver because he can just leave and i wasn't sure if this was actually the deliverer you were expecting you know so then i was asking questions because i don't want to get killed i have a few points few points number one that's a valid reason but number two don't you know that sometimes you have to like sign for a package and they're going to keep ringing until you either aren't home or answer the door? Yeah, which is why I specifically asked you, what is this package? Okay, that's fair. But also next time, just <laughs> answer the door. And then get killed? No. You- <laughs> Sir. This is why Theo exists. <laughs> I'm like, I want a big dog at the Theo house. Theo is our boxer, by the way, for those yes. of you who are wondering. If you guys don't know, we got a puppy a month ago. We have a lot going on. Yes. But I wanted to get a big dog um, for reasons of, one, I love big dogs. I grew up with them. And uh, I'm kind of like, you know, I'm a little tired of like the little dog. I'm like, I want like a a dog dog. You know what I'm saying? Like a dog with utility. Uh Like this dog has a purpose. (laughs) Like strap a thing on this dog and send him off. Like He's got a mission. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I've always wanted that. When we have a baby down the road and you're here alone, I'll feel so much better with just a big dog that will be able to at least like make someone think twice about like entering the house. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And that's also a perfect example. Like maybe you honestly would have felt a little more secure if Theo was like full grown. Like this dude's got my back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know. He's such a sweetheart. If you guys ever get the chance to meet Theo... He is the sweetest sweetheart, such a calm boy, loves people. But that's the best part about boxers when we were doing our research. They're incredibly good with people, incredibly good with family and children. But I think what- You know what would have been better than a boxer though? Let's hear it. A staffy. No, thank you. A Staffordshire Bull Terrier Pitbull. Yes, Uh -uh. staffies. Do you know what their nicknames are? Thick neck, low to the ground, awkward <laughs> head size. <laughs> no, oh. they're called nanny dogs because they nanny children so well. They're so protective of kids. So mm. I was like, well, if you, I really, really want a staffy because they look exactly like our Frenchie, but like a bigger version Just of Just like it. weirder. No, they're so cute. We did the research. We're like, okay, what are really good guard family dogs? Staffy was right up there with It boxers. wasn't in the top three. The top three on all the lists we found, I can't remember what number one was, but number two was like Doberman and number three was Boxer on pretty much every list. Beautiful. (sighs) Well, speaking of making babies and having babies and growing our family, we still have yet to talk about how we met, how this relationship even got started. Yeah, we should probably go there. Because it's our third episode and we've gotten comments being like, "Um, we want to know how you guys met yeah that's what my sister said she's like i love the episode you guys have such good like you know banter and it was so entertaining i would love to like you know hear more about like diving in about like how you met and like dating and stuff like that let's get into it you want to start or should i start actually i will start yeah go for it i will start 
because I was very new to the dating game when I when I decided to start dating again. Before 2018, I would have said I would never be on the dating apps because I thought dating apps were weird. So 2018, oh. yeah, 2018 rolls around. I'm like, oh, fuck, I actually don't know how to meet men. I, I could sit outside of Whole Foods, but I'm not doing that. So what are the other ways to meet men? I guess it's the dating apps. And I've only heard bad things about Tinder. Tinder at the time was like fuck boys and you just want to fuck bumble was like that's a lot of pressure on the girls and i was like okay i'm hearing a lot of good things about hinge so i want to enter my fuck girl stage i want to enter my ho phase because i have never been in a ho phase i am a relationship girl i've just been in long-term relationships we call that a serial dater i am a serial dater Psycho. you know what <laughs> i'm just kidding you are so sorry unsure. to interject really quick um i was in the same exact boat when I was in my last serious, serious relationship, I was like, there's no way I'm going to be going on dating apps. Then 2016 rolls around, <laughs> 2017, and I'm like, oh, we're getting on those dating apps. Yeah. <laughs> Solid. I mean, that's yeah. totally fine. Okay, so I download Hinge. Literally, the first few messages I ever got, it was Matt. Did I know that? I don't think you knew that. I don't think you knew that at all. So, yeah, I saw Tiffany's profile on Hinge and I thought there was something very fascinating about uh, her because. What was the photo? Oh. I think it was the accumulation of all your photos because oh. you're obviously a content creator. You know, mm -hmm. your photos were so much better than everyone else's photos. It wasn't like, oh, you had one good photo, two good photos. No, like all five of your photos were amazing. And it was very intriguing. Like there was one of you in Paris and you have like silver hair and like, you know, you're in these different settings. And I'm like, this girl looks like she's doing something. Mm -hmm. You know, you look professional. You looked like you were like, you know, Got you didn't look average. Yeah, you looked <laughs> like I know how to put myself together and present myself, which was very attractive. And your job on this on Hinge said video editor. And I go, <laughs> ah, I'm editing videos. Like easy, right? Yeah. And you had these different prompts on your Hinge profile. It was like, I lent Kristen Bell my bra. <laughs> uh, my dog is Instagram famous. And I can't remember the other one. And I got suspended from school. I, I think what I actually responded to was the thing about the dog. Okay. Wasn't it? I think so. And I was like, yes. I was like, how famous is your dog? Right? Is that yeah. what I said? Yeah. It was about Zoe. It was definitely about Zoe, the first DM. And then you sent me the dog's profile. Mm -hmm. And I was like, damn, it's like 60,000 followers on here. Mind you, this is what, 2017, yeah. 2018? Like, I didn't know people. Like, I she's knew lost followers <clears throat> since then because I have not posted in yeah, years. You're bad. You're bad. Um, I think she's down to like 45,000. I don't even know. But she did Doing have a solid dirty. amount at one point. Got one brand deal as a dog. It was great. Wow. But I I really fall off, fell off on that. Because I don't like I I mean, she's like my dog. She's my baby. It's not like I use her for content, you know? And I can't remember exactly what I said, but I responded to the, the prompt about the dog being famous. I think I said something like, What do you consider famous? Yes. And then you sent me the profile. I go, oh, fuck, damn, that's crazy. And the whole experience with communicating with you mm -hmm. was I got one message every day from you. <laughs> I was trying to continue the conversation. Yeah. So it was like about the dog and then nothing. I didn't hear anything. Then the next day you responded back to that. Then the ne then I responded. And uh -huh. then the next day you'd say one thing. And so it was one sentence at a time, like one response. Then I would respond and ask a question, <laughs> one response. And I'm like, well, she's not like, the responses weren't like, I'm not interested. It was more like, I'm just not checking this that often, which maybe there was some attraction on that, you know, like maybe playing a little harder to get. Probably, I was not playing hard to get. Right. But it it's maybe came off that way where it was like, okay, you're giving me a little piece at a time. And then I think I just swooped in after a week mm -hmm. and I go, at this rate, we'll finally have a full conversation by the end of the month. And you said, Christmas. <laughs> And this is the summer. I was slick. The slickest thing you've ever done. <laughs> Let's be honest. It's been downhill on the slickness scale. <laughs> and so after that, I was like, Christmas, I was like, damn, are you going to make me wait that long or something like that? And then now you were kind of like engaged in the conversation mm -hmm. at that point. You were like, well, what do you, what do you, what do you want? <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know how you framed it. I don't remember. I wish we had yeah. these DMs because we both deleted our hinge. It was something along the lines of like, okay, like what next? Kind of like, okay, like what do you want? And I was like, we should grab drinks or dinner, or like yeah. happy hour or whatever. Actually, you said, you put a timeline on it. You said this week. So then oh, yeah, I yeah, said, yeah. 
I'm only free tomorrow. Mind you, I was free every fucking day of the week, but I wanted to see. And I go, oh, shit. <laughs> I remember like sitting up and being like, I got to make a move. Like I, there's a decision to be made right here in this moment. And I was like. Okay, let's do it. I actually only think that I like dated one person from apps. Really? Yeah. Before I that. I didn't know that. Yeah. It would always get to that point, you know, conversation back and forth. And it just, every time I like got close to being like, when it was actually time, I'd be like, like, I'm not even like interested in these people. Mm -hmm. Like there was nothing that was actually driving to be like, all right, let me like Uber and make a plan and like spend money. And I was broke at the time. So I was like, eh. But like with you, I, there was something that was so fascinating. And I was like, Aww. damn, like you're really pressing me here. Like tomorrow. Like but who I the f says you. that? I just said like I'm only free tomorrow. So, But but you're putting me in a position yeah. to make a decision, which mm -hmm. maybe there's something to gain from that. You know, people listening to this, like don't make yourself too available. I think that one, that's the key. I was like, all right, let's do it. What's your number? Then you gave me my, you gave me your number. And then we started <laughs> texting. And then it was like. I remember I was so excited that when you texted me, it was blue. That's what you said. I think that was your first <laughs> response. It was like, thank God it's blue. I was so funny and slick. Wow. I know. You like have no I knew how game. to flirt then. I, I don't you have You like game. suck at texting. I mean, so do you. But that's only as we've gotten like more serious. Yeah. You know, whatever. We started texting. You were super stoked that it was blue because your ex apparently had, you know, an like Android. A, an Android, whatever. And then we were like texting a bunch and then I figured out a plan. I'm like, let's grab mm -hmm. a happy hour, which is always a safe move. Keep it light. Yeah. Keep the options open. Yes. So that's what we did. I found a spot. You want to know why I said I was only free tomorrow? Because you were getting your hair done. I Classic. I was getting my hair done and it's I was looking same, pretty good. It's the same thing you do when you have friends coming over. You're like, oh, can we get like Deborah to come by? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Weird. And then like the next day you'll be like, oh, like my friends are coming over Wednesday. I go, okay, that's why you yeah, wanted. Yeah, duh. <laughs> Smart. Of course. By Maximize. the way, Deborah is our um, our amazing cleaning lady. You make it sound like we have a cleaning lady that comes once a week, but it's once oh, no, every no, no. four months. It's 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 when our friends come over, which yeah. is very rare because once every four. Months. I love our house, but our friends' homes. Oh man, yeah, they have cloud couches, and if you've never sat in a restoration hardware cloud couch, you are missing out on life. When you have rich friends, you really realize like we're okay. the broke friends. Yeah, we're the broke we're friends, the which broke is friends. crazy. And I was talking to Jeremy, I think last night. And uh, we were just talking Your about best like, friend. I love Jeremy. No, Jeremy's I'm only saying man. this because Jeremy called us our best friends. He said, my best friends came out with a podcast and my heart just like felt so warm because he would never say that to us in real life. That man would never be nice to Jeremy's us. Jeremy's in, in the new place in his I life. Know. Like, you know, he's doing well. Yeah. Love Jeremy. And we were just talking about like drumming and getting back into it. Mm -hmm. And he's like, ah, I have no place for my drum set. I go, what do you mean? Put it in your garage. And he's <laughs> like, no, there's no space. And I'm like, their garage is like. Every time I go into their garage, I'm like, okay, they're nice. rich. Like these it's people organized. are rich because <laughs> <laughs> their garage feels like it's got heated floors. It's like not your typical garage. But besides that, where were we with the whole story of our dating? Oh, and you were saying the only reason that you wanted to um, say tomorrow was because you were getting your hair done. Yes, because I knew I was going to look cute and I was going to be downhill the rest of the week. But you know what caught my attention? Because mind you, you were not the first guy to ask me on a date. Oh. There was I a know guy. You had a guy that wanted to like build Ikea furniture at your house. Yes, you. because I had just moved to my house in Lemur Park at the time. Not the house I live in now. But I was just moving and I had told the guy I was moving. He's like, I, I'm a great Ikea builder. And I was like, our first date is not going to be inside my house, you serial killer. Yeah, that's up. I am not allowing you inside my house. That's like a really good like date three. You know, yes. date one well goes well. <laughs> date two is like, all right, let me take you on a proper date. Mm -hmm. and it's like, oh, if it goes well, date it's three, like three free labor. Free labor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's that's the scenario. But you were not the first guy that asked me on a date. Okay, we get it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But um purely just your profile photos. I was just so attracted to you. I was like, this man is a good looking guy. Great profile. I'm a sucker for like a good profile. And I wanted someone that looked different than anyone else I've dated. And you just don't look anything like anyone I've ever dated before. So I really don't have a type. And you were just like, oh, you look so different to me. Mm -hmm. um, and you have this photo of you that I love to this day. And I don't know where it is because it's not on your Instagram. 
or maybe it is, but you were like throwing up lemons. You were like juggling lemons. And I was like, this man can juggle. He, he, he knows how to work his hands. Um, just kidding. That's not what I thought, but I was like, this is such a great photo. And it was so artsy and it was so different. And a lot Ooh. of the guys, just like you had said about me, a lot of the guys who had photos up were terrible. It was them holding a fucking fish. And I'm sorry, yeah. if you're a male with a fish holding photo on your profile, please delete it. We had a great first date, by the way. I was really nervous, actually. I'd actually, um, driving from my hair salon to the restaurant, I'd actually drove past you. Because I Ubered. I'd never car at the time. Yes. Moving to Los Angeles without a car, what a struggle. But I Ubered over and then I had to like walk because I got dropped off because mm -hmm. I was doing I, Uber Express pools. Your life has totally glowed up since then. Hey, I met you. Yeah. Your life is so different than this Uber pool broke man that I first started dating, but yep. I was still very attracted to. Um, so I saw you walking and I remember texting you being like, I see you. <laughs> you know, and then I what a weird text to get like. <laughs> Okay, I'm nervous as well, right? I'm like walking down the street and then it's like, I see you and it's like, from what angle? Like, where are you? I don't even know. Yeah, so I saw you, but I was still struggling to find parking because we're talking about Beverly Hills. Um, So I, I don't actually end up sitting next to you for like maybe 10, 12 minutes. I was actually the one running behind, but I was actually early at first, but I was so nervous that I was like waiting like, maybe a mile away from the spot and then like drove a little bit later. I was like, okay, I need to be like five minutes late. Like that's a perfect amount of time. But before I had seen you or anything, I was actually texting my group chat of friends and I was about to stand you up. I was going to stand you up on our first date because I was so nervous. It would have been so rotten. It would have been so rotten. It would have been so on brand for us. I was so nervous. Um, but my friends, Alicia, Remy, Mia, Lauren, all talked me into it they're like what's gonna go wrong nothing's gonna go wrong but for me I actually didn't feel ready to go on my first date I'd broken up with my like long-term boyfriend maybe four or five months prior so I probably wasn't ready but like meeting you and having such a refreshing first date I was like I really like this guy so yes. when I was sitting there waiting right I was like okay you know I'm nervous but again it's like whatever mm -hmm. you know what's the worst that can happen like it doesn't work like whatever and I remember sitting at the table outside in Beverly Hills at this random restaurant next mm -hmm. to an Equinox, nice area. And I'm sitting outside waiting to order drinks, waiting for you to show up and you walk up and my seat is facing the street. So I can see who's like walking in and out. Right. Mm -hmm. And I see you walk up and I'm not even kidding. When I saw you for the first time, and this is not on some corny shit, this is for real. I'm like, holy shit. She's be more beautiful <laughs> than she is in the photos. Like in what? front of me, I was like, Holy shit, this person is so well put together. And that was so attractive. I was so attracted to that. I was like, damn, like she looks good. It was the fresh hair. <laughs> yeah, it was the hair, but it was also like the style and the makeup. And it could just, it, again, it just was like, there's something going on mm -hmm. that I want to learn more about. There was some something that was drawing me to you. Did you girls, know? I mean, I guess you haven't gone on a lot of first dates through the dating apps, but did the other girl that you had met, was she not showing up? better looking than our photos like probably like the same mm. you know mm -hmm. but also like and that's also what i'm saying her eyes match your uh sorry our cat if you're like listening she just popped up on tiffany's chair and her eyes match your um my your jacket, like coat and jacket p.s um for those of you guys who are only listening to audio if you guys want to see the video portion of our podcast you can watch it on spotify or youtube yep 100%. And then follow us on socials. And plug, give us a nice five-star rating. <laughs> 100%. And again, I'm not trying to be corny or tooting your horn. I think yeah. most people that meet you, when they see you, you just have this like infectious look. You're like something about you, right? Like I don't know how to explain it, but it's like you're a very good-looking person. Um, Funny you say that because I don't think that i think i personally oh. look better no i'm not even fishing get I think your pole <laughs> out of the pond okay well maybe this stems from the fact that my little asian aunties when i was growing up were very honest with me growing up being like you are the ugliest one out of your sisters damn that's fucked up yes but it made me glow up so i guess in a way i was very happy that happened that's not nice like have you met an asian auntie they're never nice they are very honest very very honest I appreciate honesty. You won't when they're honest with you. They will literally be like, this, 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 this needs your to hair be is changed. Thin. 
(laughs) (laughs) I don't want to backtrack and like bring up an ex I had introduced to my family, but they said some really mean things to my ex. So I don't think. Yeah. You scared the pants out of me to meet your mom and your family. (laughs) You told me all the mean shit your mom would say to your ex. And I was like, oh, I had to because if that was to happen and I didn't prep you, you would be, I'm breaking up with this girl. There's no fucking way we're working out. But if I made you so scared, you would have had a great impression and great experience because you would have known what to expect. And thank God my family loved the shit out of you. I was actually just talking to my grandma. It was her 82nd birthday um, on Monday. I was like listening in. I was working, but I like kind of heard like, and she was like, I don't know if you heard because she was speaking in Vietnamese. I finally showed her my ring and um, she was like, is it with Matt? Because she's not sure if I'm still with you or not. Because you I, don't communicate. I don't. Terrible. I don't talk to my family that often. It's bad. But I was like, yeah, of course. She's like, he's so handsome. So handsome. I was like, I know that's why I'm with him. And uh, then I heard you be like, do you like Matt? And she's like, yeah. Oh, you know what her favorite thing about you was? Was the fact that you had, um, it was Christmas when I finally brought you home, 2019. And you had asked my grandma while she was washing dishes. You asked her, what can I help you with? And she said, washing the dishes and you didn't blink you started washing the dishes you didn't even question it you didn't hesitate you go okay move over i mean the fact that that's the not a baseline for most people does shock me but it is like i i know that i guess like i just grew up in a different way with like siblings mm -hmm. and stuff like that and always seeing my mom like washing dishes and doing this shit like for me Scotty and donna did a great job on you shout out Yes. to the parents so yeah my grandma loves you but my grandma was so mean to my ex um unintentionally she's never mean on purpose she was just unintentionally very honest with him and then i was like okay i need to prep you to take you home but yeah my family very honest actually when i talked to my grandma the other day she straight up was like did you get surgery on your eyes mm-hmm. i don't know if you heard that i did see exactly she'll just straight up be like you need surgery What's wrong on with this your- Nice. yeah um no she was like your eyes look so massive what did you do she was like did you get surgery p.s this is the same grandma that started the rumor that i got a nose job to my entire family when i came home for christmas freshman year at ucla i finally learned how to do nose contour came home with nose contour on and she didn't ask me anything but weeks later after i got back to ucla got back to school my mom calls me out of nowhere goes did you get a nose job and i go with what money she goes well grandma is telling the entire family you got a nose job i was like i did not get a nose job i just got good at doing my makeup so clearly i grew up from like high school to college i really had a giant glow up so yeah when i see your high school photos i'm like you're cute i see it but like then you know you definitely had a glow up for sure yeah Um, so when you tell me i look cute i i still revert back to that i do know that i look much better than i did but i still don't think i'm like i think you have like an infectious look I think I have an infectious personality, which helps the looks. Yeah, your personality is <laughs> decent. I tell you all the time. <laughs> um. So, yeah, when we when we sat down and I, I saw you for the first time, I honestly was shocked. And like I said, I went on other dates, like, mm-hmm. with other people, and I've gone out with, like, you know, beautiful women for sure. But, like, with you, it was, like, you know, like, the second I saw you, I'm, like, you know, like model, I don't know, something there. And also when we do photo shoots or anything like that, or I'm helping you out with photos and then you'll take photos for me. And then I'm like looking through my photos, whatever. And I'm like, all right, I got one photo out of 75 where I feel like I look good. And then I look at the photos for, for you and I'm like, damn, like every one of these look good. Like you're just very natural on camera. No, I just think you're hard on yourself. Everyone's harder on themselves. Because Probably, yeah. actually we took photos the other day and I thought they all looked good of you. And I was like, I think I have two good ones of me. But we're just so yeah. hard on ourselves. True. So anyways, uh, the date went really well. Yes. We had appetizers. We Back to the one shot wonder. We ordered <laughs> drinks and you drank not even half of it. You drank one third of your drink and you said, I need to stop because I'm going to get buzzed. And I think even before we went on our first date, you told, told me you. you were a one shot wonder, like one hit wonder or whatever. People say that all the time. Like, but no, a third, <laughs> a third of your drink and you started to feel buzzed and had to stop, which I loved. Because a lot of people go on dates and they want to drink mm-hmm. to like feel confident and like let loose. And I love the fact that I was sitting down with someone that didn't want to actually feel that way. You're like, let me stop before I get buzzed. Yeah. And so that was also attractive. And then 
we had just really good like conversation. You know, I think it's all about meeting people at the right time and having the same intention. Because mm-hmm. I feel like we met it, and I think that we just met at a time where like both of our, you know, intentions aligned, you yes. know, and like it was kind of easy well, to tell. Well, somewhat. <laughs> well, my heart and my brain were had different intentions. My brain wanted to be in the, the hoe phase and my my heart was like, I want like a serious boyfriend because we had this great date. I wanted to extend it and you had never had boba before. And if you guys know anything about me, I am the boba queen. I love boba, addicted to boba. And I was like, you, I have to have you try this boba. I have to have you try it for the first time. You took me to boba. Mm-hmm. And mind you, at this point in our date, you had only told me you were a video editor. Yes. I stuck the shit out of you before our date. What? I stalked the shit out of you. Oh, I'm sure. Before our date. When we're sitting down and you take me to Boba, you eventually took me to UCLA. Yes. By the way, this is like out of a movie type date situation. And also when we went to go get Boba, you're like, yeah, my car, it's at valet or whatever. And I'm like, okay. You know, we pull up again. I'm broke. I have no money. Valet pulls up in Beverly Hills, this brand new (laughs) convertible Mercedes Benz white and I go, damn, who is this person that <laughs> I'm with right now? This video editor must make some <laughs> yeah. really good video edits. Yeah, literally. And I'm some like, what the fuck shit. is going on? <laughs> and like you drove. And I was just sitting in the front seat and I was like, damn, like what has my life turned into? I'm like, life is like, you know, very interesting how it's turned out. Whatever. We go to Boba and I'm like, okay, it's all right. Like I don't love Boba that much. I but it was never tried it. I had never tried it. But I'm saying when I had it, I was oh. like, yeah, it's like good. Like, okay. <sighs> I'm not a huge boba fan. Like I like it, but mm-hmm. there's so many other things I would rather drink. We go and you're like, let me take you on a tour around UCLA. So you take me on a tour. We're walking around and this is the summer. This is July, like late July. Mm-hmm. We're walking on campus mm-hmm. and all of a sudden a group of what? 20 people mm-hmm. from South America. South go, Africa. South Africa go, oh my God, it's Tiffany. Oh my God, it's Tiffany. And they start freaking out. And I'm like standing there with you and they're like, oh my God, can we take a picture? Da, da, da. And I'm like, who am I with right now? Like I was so confused. And you're like, sorry. You're like, oh I my was God, so, I'm so embarrassed. Sorry. And they take pictures of you. And then we walk and I was like, who the f- are you? And then you're like, okay, if we make it to a second date, like I'll tell you. And that kind of like opened up the I banter. so slick. I know. Who is this person? I have no wow, idea. Wow, not me prepping for a second date before our first date even ended by saying, I'll tell you a little secret. So anyways, we're walking around. You show me, but you take me to the bomb shelter, which is like mm-hmm. this place. Like it's all like empty and it's like out of a movie because no one's there. And I can tell yeah. you wanted to like kiss because you were getting close and you were like showing me your Instagram. You didn't want to kiss me? No, I did. But I was just like, you know, I was like waiting, waiting a little bit for like a good moment. Like I could tell you wanted, but I was like finding the right like time. Ugh. You didn't want to kiss me at that moment? No, I did. But it was like, you got to like wait till a good moment. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, that, that connection. So whatever. We kept walking, took me to your sorority. You're like, I wonder if anyone's inside. Like, da, da, da. It was the summer. So we sat outside just on the steps and then we had our first kiss, which was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, da, 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 da. And it was terrible. Which it was. It was such a terrible kiss. It, the, the setting was A+. plus. The kiss was yes. C+, plus at best. It was a magical moment this entire date until that very moment where we had our first kiss. It wasn't terrible, terrible. It's just like I didn't really feel anything from the kiss. Exactly. Same. Yeah. Same. But like I've hooked up with girls where they're so bad like at kissing. Like this one girl... I'm not the I bottom 10%, with. right? No, you're a great kisser. It was just that one, one like, we weren't in sync kind of vibe. But there's like We need to actually say why we weren't in sync because... <laughs> you think that I just, like, led with my tongue you like a hate lizard that or I some tell shit. This. You hate that I tell you. Because the way that you make it seem is that I'm, like, just, like, nasty with my tongue or, like, have no, like... You have, like, you the know. cleanest tongue I, I have actually ever, like... <laughs> So witness weird, weird I, it's, it's true um you have a very clean tongue but um i want to tell the story <laughs> so we we uh we were sitting in the front of our steps at the sorority house matt takes a photo of me i'll actually have the photo up right here i still have this photo and i'm doing my little kd sign because i'm a kappa delta by the way and it was like a little cute moment it was towards the end of our date it was really late it was 10 p.m we started our date like six probably it's four hours in and we're sitting in front of our steps and we finally lean in and we kiss and nothing. 
Because what happened is I had my mouth closed and Matt had his tongue out and it just did not work. The way that you say that is like, <laughs> I just was like, uh, like, no, it's probably you true weren't that you trying to, that. you weren't trying to like make out. You were trying to like kiss exactly. and I was going for like a make out, exactly. but not like a slot. Like I'm not a sloppy kisser at no, all. You're not, you're not. But yeah, so um, I was just doing a, pe- I was like a, a pure kiss peck like and you went just for, goes like a, for like a peck though. Like, I I'm don't sorry. Know. I just haven't dated, I just haven't dated around. So like, I just didn't know that was like a first kiss was a make out. I just thought first kisses were a kiss, not a make out. Like, can you imagine just being like, I mean, no, that, I I have done that. Like, it really is situational. Yeah. You know what I mean? You just Um, thought because we had gotten so close on this first date that we were a little further along than we actually truly were. Yeah, 100%. (laughs) And another moment that actually kind of um, maybe like made the, the first kiss a little less magical was that my foot slid up your butt. Oh, that's right. <laughs> no, that was when we were walking. Oh, was it? Yeah, mm. what are you talking about? You're making shit up. Well, it happened at one point in the night. But things happen the way that they're supposed to. Yeah. And here we are. Here we are. So that took a really long time to just get through date number one. I think it's because we had so many layers to it. And I think yeah. I'm sure people will love hearing about all the layers of us meeting. But yeah, it took off from there. Um, We had a terrible first date. But our, our terrible first kiss, but our second kiss we ever had... Damn, that shit was steamy as fuck. That was magical. That, that was, shit was hot. That was a good second kiss. Yeah. Tiffany was trying to smash. I was trying to smash that. Super night. hard. Mm-hmm. Little desperate. Little like thirsty. Desperate. Not desperate, but I could tell you were like, like really like, you know, trying. I just had a bit of a so I I wanted to get, but I will say I am so sorry for Donna, and our parents and whoever else is listening to this who knows us in real life. But I went hard because like we had our first date. It went so well. And I randomly had a friend who had a performance in LA on Thursday. This was a Tuesday. And I remember the next day I texted you and I was like, do you want to come to this performance? And a- after the date went well or whatever, I'm like, okay, like, you know, my thought process behind it was like, all right, I'm just going to like, you know, we're going to talk and I'm going to figure something out and see if she's available this weekend. Yeah. Right. I'm not going to be like the next day, like, hey, let's do something. And then you texted me on Thursday, two days later. And you say, hey. Are you free to come to my friend's show at like six o'clock tonight? Yeah. And in my head, I was going to be like, no, like I have stuff going on. I'm like busy. Like, let's do something this weekend. You're kind of catching me off guard. I kind of wanted to have control. (laughs) And I just remember having this very, very important switch happen Mm -hmm. that I think like I always give people this advice now. I think a lot of people who are like dating and trying to find love and stuff, they like They want to have this form of like control where they're like, you know, it needs to be this situation. Like, ooh, when I meet his family or his friends here, I go this places or I'm opening up these different sides of me. And I think that we had so much success dating. And at least for me, it was like a really great experience because I allowed myself in that moment. Literally, this was the moment I decided. And I remember talking to Mario. I'm like, should I go? Should I not? And he just was kind of like, well, what do you want to do? Like, da, da, da. And I was just like. Fuck it. And I literally, one of Mario and I's mantras, we used to always have like a mantra for the year. Mm -hmm. And when we first moved out to LA, our mantra was uh, more life. More life. More life. It was just everything. When we didn't know like a decision to make, it was like more life. More life. Go. You know? Yeah. Like, oh, should I like go to this like party? It's like more life. Like have more experiences. Just go. And so I remember telling myself, you know what? I'm going to just like let my expectations like in my guard down and I'm just going to like roll with it. Like no games. Like, yeah, I'm free. Let's go. And like ever since then, every decision was kind of just like no games. I'm free. Mm -hmm. I want to see you. Let's do something. And from there, that's how it really just like kind of progressed so quickly. I do want to give you one more story that I don't think I've ever told you. You know how you had a magical moment where you saw me for the first time and you're like, oh, my God, this girl looks better than she does in the photos i didn't have that moment with you on our first date for some i don't know why maybe it's because i saw you while we were like driving i was driving right it could just be that i'm not as like jaw dropping as you okay, are okay shut up. Little um, instagram model get your fish out of the pond get your pull I'm not, out of the pond. literally i'm not anyways my friend andy case she's a really great singer um she had a show and i invited matt really really hoping you would go because if not, I was going to go by myself and be the like third wheel to my two friends who are a couple. And I really, really wanted you to go. And the show started. It started at like six or seven. And it was seven and you had not shown up. And you had only told me beforehand. You were like, I maybe can make it. You didn't give me a definitive yes or no. So at seven, 
she's already playing, she's already singing. And all of a sudden, I have this empty seat next to me, by the way, just in case, just in case. All of a sudden, this random guy sits next to me. And I'm like, wow, this guy's really good looking. Just out of the corner of my eye, I could just tell this guy was so good looking. And I turned my head and it was you. And I kid you not, like, I don't know if it showed on my face or not, but I was like, this, like, Matt is hot. And yeah, that's, then we just started making out. My two friends who I brought with me ended up leaving us there. Like, I think you just thought I was hot because it was dark. In maybe. That. You're also wearing a hat. <laughs> Every time I wear a hat, you're just like, oh, you're hot. No, that's not true. I prefer we have you this without conversa- a hat We have now. this conversation all the time. It's only when you wear, like, you used to wear it backwards and I used to love that. But now I like it when you wear it like a dad. <laughs> dad hat. <laughs> Yeah, and so fast forward, here we are starting a business together, an NFT project, and who would have thought? The worst first kiss I've ever had would be you, but also the best relationship I've ever had would be you. Same. <laughs> like, literally. I wasn't your worst first kiss. No, no, no. You weren't my worst first kiss, but I felt nothing yes. when we kissed. Those I, sparks. like, didn't feel anything. And I remember leaving that and being like, uh, same. I, I, I remember leaving that date like I got in my sad little like uber right <laughs> and you're like oh i'll wait for you i go no, just go like yeah. don't wait on me please like you, uh, you just know. didn't care to be around me anymore no no no. it's because <laughs> it's like it, it's a weird thing when like you're like you don't have you can't like leave yourself yeah. right you have an uber so you have like a loss of this sense of control like i can leave at any moment and i just felt weird like no no, no. you don't have to like wait for me to get picked up like just go yeah and it obviously it was like things were good and i was like let's just leave it on a good note just like yeah <laughs> everything was fine just get out of here okay. like okay i'm ready to like move on and i just remember being in that uber and i just had a smile on my face because i was like we just had a great day like it was fun it was like mm-hmm. fun to meet someone new and like talk and like spark something up yeah. and, but i remember being like the kiss was not good but it wasn't like terrible. I just didn't feel anything. But I remember just being like really happy and excited that I met someone that was like really cool and that I was I really liked and was yeah. like fascinated by. Yeah. Um. So it's crazy how you can go from like having no sparks to being like, I mean, goddamn, like when within a matter of like a week, two weeks, I was like head over heels. Yeah. Like in love. Same. We've just like spent so much time talking about how we started dating, but like. Also, the biggest thing that we're doing is launching tomorrow. And I think we need to talk a little bit about about it for sure, because I know so much of our community is like so excited about the podcast. And as I've been explaining, like, you know, we're definitely going to touch on NFTs and Web3 and it's like a weird time and stuff. But we're like building regardless. And tomorrow, by the time you guys are seeing this, we are minting and we are super fucking excited. And I have no idea how this is going to go. I just know That I'm putting everything I can Mm -hmm. into making this happen. You have been. We are literally. No matter what happens tomorrow. It's going to go incredibly well. Because Matt and I are here to build in the long run. 100%. And I think that it takes the right people to do it. And like with launching this brand. I think what we have wanted to do off the bat. Is separate ourselves Mm -hmm. from your typical NFT project. And start building a brand. Yeah. People say, I want to build a brand. Like, okay, cool. You have a logo and like a t-shirt. But how are we feeling about launch? I am feeling great because we, I'm not kidding you guys. For those of you guys who are not well-versed in the NFT space, we have something incredible going for us. And it's this mystery trunk. Our developer was able to give us this mystery trunk. And if you guys are like, what the f- are you talking about? It is changing. It is going to change the way people mint their NFTs. So I think a lot of people that are probably listening like don't understand NFTs and like what we're kind of talking about. So we really encourage everybody to one, go to our Discord, which we'll link. Yes. Because there's some educational content in there that will explain exactly what we're talking about Mm -hmm. so you can understand the terminology, what's happening, because I was in the same exact boat. I had no idea what any of this stuff is. But regardless, what we're doing with the minting process, which is when you buy an NFT, mm-hmm. and you can think of an NFT as a digital collectible, right? We are completely innovating the process of buying one and revealing one mm-hmm. through a gamified, interactive way. And that's how we've built the mystery trunk. Yes. The mystery trunk is the most innovative and gamified minting and reveal experience that the market has ever seen before. 
There are so many different layers to why this mystery trunk is literally groundbreaking and taking digital collectibles to the next step. Mm -hmm. So the way that the mystery trunk works, you mint a mystery trunk. When you get that mystery trunk, unlike other projects, when it's time to reveal days later, you actually have the choice as a holder and an owner of this mystery trunk to not open your mystery trunk. Mm -hmm. Why is that important? Well, you can decide at any point when you want to open this thing up. Mm -hmm. Just like a pack of Pokemon cards. You don't know what's inside. There could be something so valuable, yep. but the value of that mystery is so incredibly valuable. So each mystery trunk has three runaway NFTs inside that have been generated for you. You don't know what they are until you decide to open them. If you That's op so cool. If you open your mystery trunk by going to our website, connecting your wallet, you click yes to open. It's going to ask you, sure you want to do this because you cannot undo this action. Mm -hmm. You open it, three NFTs will pop up. Not just one. The typical process of minting an NFT is you get one and that's it. And you have no say over what it is if you're minting it. Now we're giving you three options and you get to actually pick which one you want. That is groundbreaking for a number of reasons. Because number one, you get to pick which one you like. I mean, how many times have you minted an NFT that you just fucking hate and you wish you got a different one? Now you're tripling your chances of getting something that you like. What it does with the collection is we're not going to see what the entire collection looks like. Who knows how long it'll take yeah. for everyone to start opening them up, right? Yeah. It could be three months down the road and someone opens up a mystery trunk one day and a never before seen trait of the collection comes out. Comes out. Like, do you know how exciting that is in this whole world? And it brings people together because once you open your mystery trunk, we're going to allow people 24 hours to pick which one they want. Yeah. So they'll be able to go to Twitter, Discord. We're going to have a channel and people are going to be able to post, which one should I choose? And like people will probably chime in and be like, oh, like I'm rocking the coat, like join us. Yeah. And it's like, oh, hell yeah, let's do it together. And it creates this These extra sense of tribes and, and community and content. Because the content that's going to keep coming from this concept is so fucking cool. Yeah. Who knows if we'll ever see what the full collection looks like. It's up to the people that own it. True. And another really cool element is, let's say everyone hates the pink background, right? Yeah. And no one picks it. There's no pink backgrounds in the collection. So the community gets to dictate and use their taste to pick what the collection is overall going to look like and what the rarity scale is because it will be a sliding scale mm -hmm. as people open things up down the road. Yeah. That is like groundbreaking for digital collectibles. No one has ever done this. No. And the coolest part is that this is going to be the best looking NFT art ever because it's going to be hand selected by the entire community. And 100%. we already know our community is only going to pick the best looking ones. And again, that ties back to the ethos of us being streetwear, fashion focused with this brand and really wanting to make something that is about taste. It's about style. It's about digital representation where we spend all of our time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like that is so fucking cool to me. And I'm, I'm so, so proud, excited. so proud of what we've built. I mean, it's this is all happening tomorrow. So if you guys are late to the game, please join us. Join the Discord. Um, we are selling it for 0 0.05 Ethereum, which mm -hmm. is roughly maybe 50 or $60 as I speak right now. And it's just like a really fun way to get into NFTs. And it's really, really rare to find founders that are completely doxxed. And Andrew, Matt, and I are completely doxxed. And for those of you guys who don't know what doxxing means, it means <laughs> your face, your identity is out in the public. On top of that, I am also a female founder. Female founders are rare in this space and so i'm really proud that i have been able to onboard a lot of new girls into the space um with this documentary that just came out this week and with the podcast that just came out we've gotten so many more girls into this space that, and i'm so excited for everyone to have their first nft ever and it's it's been so fun and there's more to nfts than just having this profile photo you can use it is having this community that you feel like you're getting to know that you feel like you are a part of and it's also a feeling like there are things that are also going to happen in real life as well we're planning on throwing in real life events we are planning on having exclusive merch and exclusive capsule collections and things you can only do if you actually hold the nft so i'm super excited for tomorrow 
it feels weird saying it's tomorrow because it's actually two weeks for us but i'm less super than f- two weeks yeah oh my god it is 12 days 12 days away for us Ooh. it's crazy as a female founder, one of the biggest things that I think the mystery trunk is going to bring into the space is the fact that there will be an ability for girls who want to buy this mystery t- trunk to have a bigger chance of actually getting a girl NFT. Girls are so underrepresented in collections because girls only represent maybe 15 to 20% of Web3 in general. And I can't wait for that to be 50%. But until then, most collections are just not going to have any sort of female representation, which is why our artwork and the girl artwork specifically, I've had such a hands-on experience with our artists on because it's so, so f- important for me that girls looked good in our collection and with this mystery chunk you have a three times higher chance of actually getting a girl because you have three nfts to choose from you have three runaways to choose from and it's so important that we get more girls to feel like they actually have profile photos they want to rock because a lot of the blue chip nft projects just don't have girls in it and there is one collection i think that does such a great job which is dead fellas dead fellas not only has boys but girls and the girls are really cute so betty and psych have just done an incredible job making sure that girls felt represented and i really do see betty as someone i look up to in the web3 space because she's done such an incredible job really advocating for girls in the space i couldn't agree more like even being like a man and Mm -hmm. i just see what betty does from the side i'm like there is no better founder that's leading a project You know what I mean? She's like she's grinding so hard. She is so vocal. And it feels like it gives me I feel like there's a lot of like, you know, as a founder, you have to really like bite your tongue and be careful with what you say. Mm -hmm. But she is very vocal about how she feels. And I think that that's so powerful. And that like honestly inspires me to be like, yeah, let me like speak up about my beliefs, even though I'm in this position. I think she's doing incredible stuff. And the fact that they've worked with like all these incredible brands. Like when I saw that they were doing a collaboration with the Chicago Bulls, I'm like, you you showed me it. I'm like, holy like the Chicago Bulls are my, they're my favorite brand of all time. Yeah. The fact that an NFT project was able to do a collaboration where the Chicago Bulls used their artwork Mm -hmm. as their profile photo to me was just like, this is why NFTs are so crazy. I think this is so crazy because I think it's a really great way for like web two and web three to meld together is these collaborations like the Chicago Bulls, Levi's, Wrangler, um, Tiffany and company, Gucci, Prada, they're all getting into it. And it's like, I just get so excited knowing and seeing what more is going to happen because we are still so fresh in this space. And that's like, you know, when people are always like, what are you doing with your project? Like this, that, and the other, like, what's the value you're going to bring? It's like, First of all, we're building an infrastructure for the future. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to like tell people that because it's like, what am I going to get out of this? Like, who knows what's going to happen down the road? Just know that we have the infrastructure in place to be able to have those collaborations when we get there, when we sell out, when things come up. Like, this is a long game. Yeah, People are only thinking in the next month. We're like, we're thinking in like three years, Yeah, you know? Yeah. I mean, if you really think about it, we are so early to the point where this is why no one believes in us. Um, And (laughs) it's the same thing that happened when Internet became a thing. No one thought in a million years digital coupons was going to be a thing. They thought you would always have to like send these um, coupons in person. Right. But no, digital coupons are a thing. I, I collect digital coupons. I still clip maybe sometimes here and there real coupons but it's digital everything is digital now and 20 years ago no one believed that can you imagine what it was like to witness like the birth of an email oh yeah well i think this was a a very very successful episode three i'm actually surprised i did not get buzzed i thought i was gonna get buzzed but i did not one shot wonder tiff yeah i haven't eaten much today i didn't get buzzed we need to eat we need to eat dinner (laughs) we haven't i actually have only eaten candy today so let's grab that's up. Let's don't grab be doing some that. food. Don't be doing that. And don't. I'm in work mode. Work mode. I think it's time to wrap up. Okay. <laughs> Thank you guys um, for tuning in. Follow us on all socials. Rotten Podcast. Make sure to subscribe, like, rate, hit that follow button, and uh, tune in next Tuesday. All right. Every Tuesday. What was that saying you had? More life. More, More life. life.